Hi, this is going to be a sample problem that we're going to work together to solve KEQ equations. We're going to take a look at how to set up an equilibrium constant equation, and then we're going to practice a couple of sample problems where we solve for equilibrium constants. So this first problem that we're going to look at, um, we have the word equation for hydrogen and fluorine reacting to make hydrogen fluoride. The first thing we're going to have to do is write this as a balanced equation. And before we can balance an equation, we're going to have to write this out as their chemical formulas. When we have an element, like hydrogen, we start by writing the element symbol. And any time we write an element by itself, we have to ask ourselves, is this element diatomic? In hydrogen's case, yes, it is. So if it's diatomic, that means it comes in a group of two, and so we add a little two at the bottom. We're going to add this to fluorine. Fluorine symbol on the periodic table is F. Again, I've written the symbol for an element by itself, so I have to ask myself, is it diatomic? And in this case, again, it is, so it also gets a little two. And then we draw our arrow, and for hydrogen fluoride, we have a compound. And any time we write a compound, we do a crisscross. So for hydrogen, we know its symbol is H, and its charge is 1 plus. And for fluorine, its symbol is F, and being in group 7 on your periodic table, it gains one electron, so its charge is 1 minus. And when we crisscross these so that the charges cancel, the formula you get for hydrogen fluoride is HF. Now at this point, this is not a balanced equation. In order for an equation to be balanced, we have to have the same amount of atoms on both sides of the arrow. Before the arrow, there's two hydrogens and two fluorines. After the arrow, we only have one of each. Putting the coefficient, or the large number two, in front means we've got two hydrogens after the reaction, two before. This two also applies to the fluorine, so there's two fluorines after, and again, two before. So this is now a balanced equation. From our balanced equations, we can write our equilibrium constant expression, our KEQ expression. A KEQ expression is the math we're going to do to figure out what the equilibrium constant is for this chemical equation. KEQ expressions are always written as the products on the top and the reactants on the bottom to the powers of their coefficients. We never include solids or liquids in KEQ expressions, only substances that are in their gaseous or aqueous states. In this reaction, we're going to assume, because we haven't been told the physical states, that all of them are allowable physical states for a KEQ expression. So we start with KEQ equals. We only have one product here, and the product is hydrogen fluoride. So what about hydrogen fluoride? Well, it's going to be the concentration of the hydrogen fluoride over, we have two different reactants. One of them was hydrogen gas, and the other one was the fluorine gas, the F2. And the square brackets means concentration of. Square brackets indicate that we're talking about moles per liter. Now, this is just getting the right species in the right place. I've got my products on the top and my two different reactants on the bottom. Remember, the formulas are always to the powers of their coefficients. So we have to look at the balancing. And in this case, the balancing is 1 to 1 to 2. So this 2 here with the hydrogen fluoride becomes the power of 2 here. These guys both have a coefficient of 1. We don't actually have to write a 1 because anything to the power of 1 is simply itself. So the first step in solving any KEQ problem is to write an equilibrium constant expression. So now I want to use this expression to solve a problem. And the first problem that we're going to solve is one where I'm going to give you the concentration of hydrogen in its moles per liter. Molarity is the shorthand for moles per liter. I'm going to give you the concentration of fluorine and also the concentration of hydrogen fluoride at equilibrium. Concentrations in chemical equations are very often given to us in scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way to take numbers that are kind of ungainly, they're kind of big, and to write them in a more compact form. 3.31 times 10 to the minus 4 means that the decimal point, if I want to expand this out into its big form, is going to move in the negative or towards the left direction. And it's going to move four spaces. So you think about it like this, 3.31, and 
and we're going to back this up four spots. So there's one, two, three, four spots and put it in this position. So we're going to have a zero point, one, two, three zeros, three, three, one. This is the same number. Okay, but what we see is that this gets kind of ungainly for us to type, and so often these things are written in scientific notation. We can see that if we expand these numbers out into their full form, they're difficult to type out and very easy to type the wrong number of zeros into your calculator. Our calculators actually come with a button, um, and it's labeled differently on different calculators that allows us to type this out. So on a calculator, I want you to look for a button that says EXP or maybe EE or just a capital E, and that button there means times 10 to the power of. There's lots of different versions of it on different calculators, but it means this whole portion of times 10 to the power of. So for example, entering this number here, 2.60 times 10 to the negative 4, into a calculator is best entered as typing in 2.6. And then instead of typing times 10 to the power of, which your calculator views as a series of math functions, hit the exp button or your EE, or E, or times 10 button. Different calculators have it labeled different ways. This to the negative 4, so I remember to hit my negative button and 4. So now I have 2.6 times 10 to the negative 4 displayed on my calculator. When we're doing our math functions using a calculator, it's important that we use our scientific notation buttons because when we're doing a series of operations, calculators are very literal. And so they're going to see this number times this to the power of this, and it's just going to keep going exactly how you type it. It's going to ignore our order of operations. Now, it is possible for you to type it in more in this traditional way, but if you're insisting on doing that, make sure you bracket the whole number. So you're telling your calculator, hey, this is going to be one individual number, and I want you to treat it as such. But this prevents that from being an issue when we're doing our math calculations. Okay, so how am I going to solve for this problem to find the KEQ? Well, we've got the equilibrium expression that we figured out originally. So we're going to start by rewriting that. KEQ equals, we're going to put the concentration of my hydrogen fluoride on top, remembering to square that, over the concentrations of hydrogen times the concentrations of fluorines. Now, it is important that we remember that this is all times and divide. I have had people tell me, hey, but it says plus here, so why am I not plusing down there? Well, this is not math. This is just a sentence telling us what's happening. It's telling us that hydrogen and fluorine are reacting with each other. This is my math, and my math in equilibrium expressions is always times and divide. So we're going to start by writing out our equilibrium expression, and then we're going to substitute for values. So in place of the hydrogen fluoride, I'm going to put the number that we have calculated here, 2.60 times 10 to the negative 4. And don't forget my math expression tells me to square it over the concentration of my hydrogen is listed as 3.31 times 10 to the negative 4. And the concentration of my fluorine is listed at 4.22 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, some of you, if you're good with your math skills, will be able to see your order of operations here and enter this into your calculator sort of in one fell swoop. I don't recommend you do that. I find that often we tend to make mistakes. We think we know what we want to have happen, but we're not telling the calculator to do it. Remember, calculators are very literal. They do what they ask you to do in the order you ask them to do it. So if you're trying to enter this in in one series of operations hitting equal at the end, you're going to need a lot of bracketing on your calculator. So I recommend that we do this one step at a time. We're going to start by doing any squares or cubes or anything with exponents. We have no um, operations for the to do inside the brackets, so we'll do the exponents first. So we're going to square this number first. So on your calculator, we will enter the number that we entered earlier, 2.60 times 10 to the power of negative 4, and I want to square that, so I hit the squared button on my calculator, and my calculator is displaying this as a whole pile of zeros. Now, I could go ahead and count all those zeros, and hopefully get it right, move my decimal point over in 
the positive direction enough spaces. Or I could ask my calculator to display this in scientific notation. Most calculators have a way of translating your, your text into scientific notation form. On this calculator, it's in the setup. Some calculators have it in their mode button, and this one it's in setup. And I have FSE displaying, that's fixed scientific and exponent, so we're going to choose that. We're going to choose number one. Here it says scientific notation again to choose number one. And it immediately translated that number for me into 6.76 times 10 to the power of negative 8. Again, calculators have different ways of expressing this. Your calculator might be expressing it similarly to this. It might say 6.76e minus 8. Please don't write it this way. This is calculator speak. This is just a way that was programmed to display on an LED screen. We no more would write this this way than if you told me a funny joke and I looked at you with a blank face and said LOL. That seems ridiculous. And yet we text that quickly in a text message. So you are already familiar with the idea that what we do in real life and what we write on paper or what we say doesn't have to be the same. So we're not going to write things this way. We're going to write it in the proper expanded way, 6.76 times 10 to the minus 8. Now, that's this number. On the bottom, we have two numbers that I want to multiply together before I use them as a denominator. So let's just take and multiply these two numbers together. So we're going to take 3.31, clear this out here, 3.31 times 10 to the minus 4, so that's x which brings by times 10 to the power of minus 4. Oops, I hit that too many times. 3.31 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to multiply that by the 4.22, 4.22x, which means times 10 to the power of minus 5. And you can already see how your uh, calculator is treating each of these as a discrete number as opposed to a series of events. And we're going to hit equals. And so the number that I have here on the bottom will be 1.396. So 1.39, actually I'm going to round that. Because of the 6, I'm going to round that up to 1.40 times 10 to the power of, we have minus 8. Okay. At this point, we can divide. So we're going to take the top number divided by the bottom number. Again, using the computer's um, exp button, that you have, so we've got 6.76 times 10 to the power of minus 8. That's this number. Divide that by 1.40 times 10 to the power of minus 8. And the value that I'm solving for is 4.828, so 4.83 times 10 to the power of 0 which is frustrating. Now, 10 to the power of 0 is 1, so basically we're getting a value of 4.83. So from our calculations, we've now solved that the KEQ, when our concentrations are at this point, if this is where equilibrium hits, would be 4.83. Now, we often don't write units for equilibrium constants. It's not that they don't have them, it's just that they change for every reaction. Obviously, the units being in moles per liter for each of these is going to change depending on whether things are squared or cubed or how many different reactants and products you have. And so there's not one constant set of KEQ values. So because of that, we often don't write them. So in this case, this is the answer we got. And I'd like to do one more example with you where I give you the KEQ, and instead we look for one of the reagents. All right. In this example, we're still going to be using the same equilibrium expression that we used in the last example and originally with the hydrogen fluoride reaction. In this particular reaction, we're using the exact same KEQ again, but I'm giving you the KEQ, that value is given. I'm giving you hydrogen and I'm giving you fluorine and I'm asked to find HF. What I'm looking to solve for is this value. So I guess sometimes kids would rather put the numbers directly into this equation and then collect all the like terms and then solve to get K, the HF by itself, our variable by itself. Other times, 
I think it's easier often to rearrange the equation first. At the end, you're actually doing the same series of operation. But it's easier for me to move these little bracketed letters than it is for me to move these great big huge numbers that we have written in scientific notation. So what we're trying to do here is get this HF all by itself. So right now I've got hydrogen and fluorine both in the position of the denominator. We're dividing by them. And they're on the same side of the equal sign as the HF. So I want to get them over to the other side. So right now because they're being divided, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So if I want to cancel them on this side, I'm going to multiply this side by hydrogen and this side also by fluorine. But to keep the equal sign here, that means I would have to multiply this side by hydrogen and also by fluorine. We can see now that the hydrogens cancel and the fluorines cancel. And what I have now is hydrogen times fluorine times the KEQ is going to give us our HF squared. What we're asking for now is squared. So how do I undo a square? Well, the opposite of a square is a square root. So I still don't have HF by itself. So if I want to get rid of the square, I will square root this side. But again, to keep this equal sign, that means I have to square root this side. And a square root will cancel the square. Now this is kind of messy, so let's take and rewrite this. What I want to solve for is the square root of, I'm going to take my hydrogen concentration, multiply that by my fluorine concentration, multiply that by my KEQ, and I want to do that whole series of numbers and then square root the answer, and that will give me my concentration of hydrogen fluoride. So I find this a lot easier to rearrange from letters than it is to rearrange from a whole pile of numbers because the less we move and the less we write down, the less chances we have of making a mistake. Okay, let's uh, take this and substitute. I'm going to have to take the square root of a whole bunch of things, so let's see what we have for numbers. Hydrogen is given to us as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 3, so we've got 8.85 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to multiply that by fluorine, which is going to be 6.24 times 10 to the minus 4. And I'm going to multiply that by the KEQ. I made my brackets a bit small here, which was 6.43 times 10 to the power of 10. Okay, I need to get this whole thing multiplied out and then square root it. And that is going to give me my hydrogen fluoride concentration. Okay, let's grab our calculator. So we're going to multiply these three numbers together. Right now I have them in brackets because I have them in expanded notation, but my calculator does that handily for me with this exponent button. So we're going to go 8.8 oops, sorry, 8.85 times 10 to the, so exp minus 3. We're going to multiply that by 6.24, 6.24 times 10 to the, or exp minus 4. And we're going to multiply that by 6.43 times 10 to the 10. And we're going to get this value. So we're going to I haven't done the square yet, root yet, so I'm going to keep that there. The value we're given is 3.3, sorry, 3.55 times 10 to the power of 5. This is the concentration of HF, and we still have to do the square root. So now I'm going to take the square root of the answer. My square root button is often right above my square, so that's second function, square root of the answer, and I get 5.3. 5 5.58, so I'll round that up to 5.96 times 10 to the power of 2 as my concentration of hydrogen fluoride. Now, 10 to the power of positive 2 means we're moving the decimal point in the positive direction. It's the same as saying 596 because I moved it two spots in the positive direction. So you can write it either way. These numbers are equivalent. And concentrations are molar or moles per liter. So you can write that as moles over liter or you could write that as molarity. Either way will do. 
So it was important to note as we rearranged this formula to watch that I not only moved my concentrations around to get my unknown by itself, but I also remember to undo any squares or cubes. So I hope this helps you um, as a little algebra refresher and as a way to practice um, using writing KEQ expressions and calculating KEQ in various situations.